Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Welcome to our crochet podcast, episode 63. Welcome back to all my returning subscribers and friends. Thank you so much for inviting me over. If you are new and popping by for the first time, my name is Krista and this is a secret yarnery. It is just a room in my house that I've converted into a yarnscape, a yarn pallet. So it's not for sale, this is just my collection and where I like to pull my inspiration from. I get that question a lot, so I just thought I would answer it right away in the beginning. This channel is all about crochet and crochet related goodness. I do tutorials, a podcast on Wednesdays, live chat on Fridays, and yarning bits of goodness in between. So if any of those things are of interest to you, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Love to have you join us. There's also a notification bell beside that, so just click on that to get a little notification of when we upload a video or especially when we go live. Finished objects. If you have followed me on Instagram at Secret Yarnery or on Facebook, the Secret Yarnery and the group is the Secret Yarnery Crochet Community, you will know what I have been working on. That's a place where I just kind of like upload pictures in the middle of the night, which is usually when I get to actually crochet because I'm quite busy in the day. So you'll see what I have been working on, right? This is my finished object. Do, do, do. Check out that border. Isn't it fabulous? I love it. The yarn in the center is pastel cotton from Ice Yarn. There'll be a link in the description box below. And the border is made with Alera, also from Ice Yarn. Both of them are 50% cotton and 50% acrylic. Love how it worked up love how it worked up. So this is how big it is. If you can see, do, do, do. that is how big it is. Just small. It's kind of like, it's a really great like toddler blanket or lapgan. I would love one bigger. Like I'd love it a lot. This border, I'm in love with that border. And let me just say, for my borders, how I do it, I wing it. I just kind of start doing something. If I don't like it, I rip it, I frog it. And if I do like it, I keep going. So I had an idea, and it also has to kind of line up with your original stitch count, which, of course, C to C is a stitch count of multiples of three. So anyway, I found this, this border idea and modified it to fit C to C, and then worked on it. I worked on it all, was it Sunday, and I got up until the pink finished before I went to bed. Woke up in the morning and wanted to frog it all back, maybe to the green, maybe to the turquoise, definitely ditching the purple and the pink. I hated it. Hated it. Didn't even, I was going to frog it even in the middle of the night. I was like, just like do it now so you wake up in the morning, you don't have to like you know, frog it in the morning. And I'm like, it took so long to do, because these are picots like all the way around. I'm like, it took so long to do, just do it in the morning, like literally sleep on it. Woke up, still hated it. And I'm like, well, let me just at least start with the orange, because I've already done all of these rows. If I hate it, frogging one more row is not going to kill me. And then, boom, look what the orange did to it. I love the orange. The orange is everything. It just, oh, I knew it, I love it. Now I love it. So I have it on my bed, it doesn't really fit. It's like a little tiny, it's a little tiny square on my bed, but I love it. Look at all that goodness. It's really great. I love it. I wish it was bigger. I might make one bigger in the future. I also might not. I might just leave it like this. It's okay, right? He can stay right there. I love it. Really cozy. So half cotton, half acrylic. So it's spongy, but soft, but stretchy. It's kind of elastic -y almost. It's so cool. I really, really like it. So that's my finished object. I also have another finished object from a really long time ago. I think it's about three years ago. One of the very first garments or wearables that I ever crocheted. And it's not a fancy yarn, it's not a fancy stitch, 
but I really like it. It is a C to C. It's big. It is a C to C uh, shawl with a really cool pom pom y border that I just kind of did on my own. So I'll just show you this one a bit, what I can show you, and why I like it. I can get in front of the chair. So I like it because it covers, you know, your backside. You can't go around and like nobody's looking at your butt. And then it's big enough on the front, like you can roll it up around your neck, like you can flip it, and it still covers your butt, which is great. So I really, and it's like, this is how I did it. So when it's on my arms, can you see how the tassels like pretty much reach my wrist? Yeah, I made it pretty big. And here is the border. It's a bit of a hot mess. I really just was winging it. But I like it. I've washed it a bunch of times. This is just regular acrylic, so it would be like, you know, like a Saver 100 or something. But it's very wearable because the color, like it just goes with everything and it's actually cozy, like it's actually warm. But now that I may or may not have a fabulous yarn palette to pick from, I don't really want to be... Well, the yarn is not, it doesn't speak to me anymore. It's like, oh yeah, that. Not like, oh, like, mm. So, anyway, that's technically a finished object, although not, eh, a recent one. Oh my gosh, I'm pulling everything. Fingers. There we go. There we go. Now. Okay. So, finished object, love it. Just a C to C shawl, but I love the border on it. Like a little bit of movement, but still, like it's just so practical and so fun and so like neutral, right? This is a great one, but I'd like to make another. I'm ready to do a repeat. So looking at my stash, what do I want to use? Name that yarn. Who knows it? Who knows it? Yes, you do. Ambient or Ambiente from Ice Yarns. I love it. Link in description box below. This yarn, look at the colors. So this is, other than fabulous, which of course it is, it is a 50% wool, 50% acrylic, 100 gram ball, 134 meters, and it is a size five for bulky. It's a bulky. Look at how great that is. Bulky. So apparently this is very close to Lion Brand Landscapes, except it has a nicer fiber content. Landscapes is all acrylic, and this has half wool in it. It is very soft. It is not a... There's no scratch to it. It's literally just plain up delicious. I forget the price, but I'll put it up on the screen. If I haven't put it up already, <laughs> maybe I did. And so I was like, I could redo my C to C shawl in ambient or ambiente. It would match everything and look really like, you know, mature, like you tried, like you can crochet, right? And I have, I had purchased four balls. So I had one pack of the yarn. This is as far as I have gotten with three balls. I have one more, but I wanted to just show you. And then look. Can you see like the shine? There's like a bit of shine to it. It crochets up beautifully does not split, does, like it's just literally perfect. Very soft, very nice color changes. They're not abrupt. You at least get one square, like one shell of a good color change before it just jumps to another color. Very gradual. And I used a seven millimeter hook. Let me show you. seven millimeter clover with this. So it works up so quickly, so quickly. 
But now look how tiny it is. This is tiny. So I need, I think, two more pots because I want it to be like long enough to like curl over at my neck, like to roll at my neck and cover my bum and come down to my arms and have a big tassely border. Right? How fabulous. Look, I could just show you this all day. It's so fabulous. It is like marvelous. They have a bunch of colors, like brighter colors. This is more, new, more like natural nude kind of palette, I suppose but I am in love with it. Don't have enough. Yes, I just ordered yarn. Yes, I still have yarn in waiting. Yes, I need, to, I need more. <laughs> so I'm gonna start, I'm not buying it now, but I'm gonna start like a shopping cart of yarn that I need to finish the projects that I have. Because I do, uh, when I do buy yarn online, which is not all the time, but I'm not scared of it, like I do buy online. I bought a lot. I think I'm almost up to one ton of ice yarn already that I have bought myself. Yikes, right? So I'm pretty good at knowing their yarn, but then I also have realized the good way of doing it is literally order one pack of what you want to touch, touch it, and then decide if you want, like what colors you want and how crazy you want to get with it. This, I'm loving it. I would also love this in one of the other brighter colors, like maybe the rainbow color, to make a big C to C for my bed. Because wouldn't that just be pretty, like just across your bed, the whole top of it. It's lightweight, but still like warm, but not sweaty. I don't know, it would just be really, really great. Like nice texture, nice everything. And I'm thinking maybe I will do, like make a C to C, like this one, for my bed, but with ambient, or ambiente. How are we saying that? You can tell me in the description box below because I'm just going to be saying it twice the whole time. <laughs> but to get a whole bunch, I probably need like about five packs of this to make like a queen or king size C to C for the top of your bed. Plus with a seven millimeter hook, it's not even going to take that much time. You know what I mean? It's like you're just going to be joining yarn. I'm also joining with a magic knot. I love magic knots. Yes, there's a tutorial on the channel if you want to see how I do it. Look at this. This should just be my new backdrop. You don't need yarn, you just need my amb ambient, ambiente. <laughs> Isn't it the coolest? I'm in love. Anyway, brighter colorway, like maybe the rainbow version, because I mean it's me, and then do a really big C to C for the top of my bed with some sort, I have to find a solid yarn color some yarn, like one of the colors in the bright yarn that I want, that I want to get in a solid color for the border. Because I do like doing the mixed center, like the color changing yarn for the center of the blanket, and then the colors of the color changing yarn in solids for the border. I would love it. Like how classy is that? Anyway, the, I did that. One ball left, something to do. Doesn't even take long. Literally, not long at all. Next, so that's my C to C little project. Working on it, but now it's gonna be a UFO until I order more yarn, which will not be in the near future because I don't really need more than that and I can wait for that. But by the fall, within a few months, I'm ordering more of that. Now, we do have, should we talk about mile a minute? I think we should. Whips, another whip, and a cal. We can also talk about the cow. Let's start with the cow because that affects more of you than me. So the crochet along for May, although it's not like May, like May 1st to May 30th, but sometime in the course of May, which will be this week and next week, we will be starting to think about and plan for making a mile a minute blanket. Not that one. Ah, let me get this one. You can now officially, there you go, buddy. Love this blanket. Oh my gosh. Okay, be like that then. Can you see it? There we go. Uh, mile a minute blanket, crochet along. So I'll teach you my way of doing it. There's a bunch of different ways, but I'll just show you mine. So lots of options for it, but this is the one I have finished. This is like a stitch sampler. I just keep it on the back of my chair and it has dongleberries. 
dangleberries, dongleberries at the bottom of it, little pom pommies. And I really like it, it's super cute. Yes, I spilled tea on it. There's tea down there. Thank you. That was last week's escapades, what I got up to last week. So what I want to do for the crochet along, because I've already done this and I do love it, but I don't really want to make another because I have one, is, are you ready? And this yarn don't even start me. So delicious. So delicious. Boom. Right? So this is going to be my Minute Baby Blanket. Dreamy, squishy cloud of softness. I wish you could like, you know when you squeeze something, you can kind of hear it. Like you can't hear it, but your finger, like, I don't know. It's kind of a, it's a sense, I suppose. I wish you could have the sense of how it squishes because it is so squishy. This is Lorena Worsted. Lorena Worsted, what? So the trick with Lorena, by the way, oh, and Lorena, let me just tell you about it. Of course, I have my big whippy yarn basket there. Lorena Worsted, 55% cotton, 45% acrylic, 100 grams, 160 meters, and it is a size four for bulky or for bulkiness, so it's a worsted weight. But what I found with it, where's my little hooky, hooky dooky, oh, there it is. What I found with it is it crochets up just dreamy, again, seven milli. Seven millimeter hook. So it goes really fast. And it's so soft because it's 55% cotton. So the cotton blends, because I got one question like, what do you do with cotton blends? Anything you do with a cotton that's not like a hot plate or something for something hot, like where it would melt. Uh, but it's just like a, it's an upgraded version of cotton and an upgraded version of acrylic. It's pretty much the, like, I like it better than a plain cotton or a plain acrylic. It is soft and squishy and fluffy and light, and it has some sort of stretch to it. I don't know what is with it, but it feels like springy. It's very springy. So this is going to be Mila Minute Baby Blanket Crochet Along with the, I'm using these three colors of worsted. I will put a link for Lorena Worsted in the description box below. And if you are make, getting a jump start on it, I managed three strips or three stripes from each ball of yarn with a smudge left over. And they're this long. I have not measured it, but definitely a decent baby blanket size. If you wanted it to be larger, then double the quantities. So three baby stripes from one ball. And white to join. I have not finished joining in the white, so I'm working on this before I tell you how much you need. So that'll be a video coming out tomorrow, I hope, because I have to ooh, ooh, get hooking. So my other whips, yes I have them. I have the high tea shawl, I have the, what else do I have? Oh, my mile a minute blanket with the lambkin, the white. I do not have the, all the colors of Saver 100, some of them are still on the way. So I, when I go and look at my Saver 100, my rainbow colors are not there. Like I do, literally do not have them. So that's on hold until I get the rest of my yarn. The stole is just waiting for me to film it at some point in time. And my high tea shawl I'm working on. And there has been some questions from some people and I don't know which side you want to be on. I'd like your opinion on it. How about that? What is your opinion about whips? Because I'm totally fine with having whips. So it's not like I'm going to change. I have whips and that's my thing. And yes, I do have a YouTube channel and I do like to share my journey with you. And I do like to share my whips and I do like to um, share what I'm up to and what I'm thinking and what I, where I want to go with it. Even if I don't actually get there this year. 
You know what I mean? Because my idea might help you get there or inspire you to be like, well, that's a good idea, but I'm going to jump off from there and go and do this. So that's my way of thinking about it. But I know some people feel like if I have a whip or if I'm working on something, there should be a tutorial at this time, at this day, da 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 da. And that's just not going to happen in my life. I'm <laughs> just being like upfront. So how it works for me, my priorities, obviously my four kids. I have a five-year-old, a six-year-old, a 10-year-old, and almost 13-year-old. So that's my priority. In the day, I'm busy with them. I try to do my filming, my editing. I try to do some tutorial filming. And I just need a quiet spot in the house where I can get that done without my four kids needing my time or wanting to be with me. Obviously, if they need my time or want to be with me, that is why I am here. That's why I have kids. So that takes precedent over any hook time I have, which is why I usually hook in the middle of the night when they're sleeping. Makes it hard for filming because in the day, obviously, I'm a mom, so that's tricky. And I don't film in here because of the sun, it's too bright, I, there's only a short time, like is this, I can't film here, I have to film in another part of the house, which the kids also use, it's actually their bedroom, so oops. So a lot of moving parts in getting tutorials and videos done, which I'm totally fine with, but if seeing my whips and not having them completed at a certain time bothers you, or causes you anxiety, then let me know. I can also just show you my finished objects and keep it all as like a big surprise when I do get them finished. So let me know your, opinion on that, or your opinions on that in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and just get a feedback on where you're at with that. So thank you very much for helping me sort that out in my head. Next on the list, oh, we're starting a new thing. I've been meaning to do it for a long time and then today, procrastinating, I was doing all these cute little things on the computer. Well, I think they're cute. So here's the first one. Oh, well, let me fold it in half. Did you like it? Was it cute? Okay, hold on. So here is the first subscriber of the week. Do, do, do. Who are you? Who are you? Yes, it is. It is Karen Wright. Uh, and why Karen is subscriber of the week? She has spent at least the last month and a half watching and commenting on all of my videos. As bad as they are, from day one onward, she has been watching them, even if it's a tutorial. Like, basically, I'm just keeping her company in her house, and I love her for that. Thank you so much. So she is subscriber of the week. Thank you, Karen. She's fabulous, and I really appreciate you. So thank you so much for inviting me over and spending time with me. I love it, and thank you so much. So we're just going to be having this little segment uh, every week when I remember. <laughs> I hope every week. And there's Karen. She is our subscriber of the week. Thanks, Karen. Next, I do have a list here. I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to like, you know, not fail like I did at the live chat. Sandy, thanks. Sandy was like, oh, you have to do this. I'm like saying bye. She's like, you didn't do this. I was like, oh. So I made a new, I have a new piece of paper today and new bits to go with my piece of paper, so I'm trying to follow it. Now, deals of the week, because what happens, I do the podcast and then I find a really great deal and then I'm just telling people on the Facebook group or I'm just telling, yeah, pretty much only the Facebook group. So I thought I better start putting deals of the week into the podcast so people who are not on social media can also get in on them because there are some great deals. So today's deal of the week is Clover. Where should I put them? This side? This side? This side. So today, today's deal of the week on Amazon, it's not today, but that I found today, is Clover Amore 5 millimeter hook. Guess the price. Like legit guess the price. I want to say $4.48 today. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this later on, it might be not $4.48 anymore, but less than five bucks for a clover hook and a five milli. Who cannot use a five milli? Like I could use about four more five millis. So that is a really great deal if you have not tried a clover and you don't want to really get the whole set and not know that if you love them or don't love them. 
So that is a great deal for you. Also over on Ice Yarns, there is Air Cakes. Cakes Air? Cakes Air. Cakes Air, fabulous colors, like legit, really great. And they are $3.49 each on sale. What? They're fabulous. So pop on over there. Links for both of those things in the description box below. So head on over and check them out. If you have not shopped on Ice Yarn before and you're like, shipping's horrible, I've heard shipping's horrible, basically there's a six pack challenge. So put six packages of yarn in your shopping cart and it'll be $20.95 to the US or $32.90 to Australia or, Can or Africa. So if there might be duty in your country. I know there's duty in Canada, so they get around it by just sending it regular mail. So it's not even 20 bucks, it's like $15. It takes an extra week to get to you, but duty, but it doesn't have to, it kind of sneaks under duty. So that's another good tip for there. There's also, I've made a couple of the videos of how to shop on ice yarns and the shipping ways to get around it and all that, or how to maximize your shipping. So check those out, they're on my channel. And I'll link them in the description box below, or the cards exclamation mark here perhaps i hope so i don't know uh question for everybody is there a yarn sale in your area crochet hooks yarn sale leave it in the comments below what is your area like where are you and where are the sales hook a girl up not for me but for everybody else i just shop online i have it all sorted out but that's a hazard of living in africa I don't have cool sales like you guys do, but let each other know in the comments below because a bargain is a bargain and I'm all about a good deal. These are all the questions that were asked at the end of last week's podcast. If you have a question that I have not answered, you can also leave it in the comments below this video and I'll answer it in the next podcast. I don't know why this font is so tiny today. I don't know how I'm going to read it, but let's go. Carla Weirs says, yay, I can't wait to make the mile a minute tutorial. So looking forward to it. My favorite hook is a tulip gray handle, 5.5 milli. You must be very fast hooker to get all that done. I would like to see you crochet at your own speed on a video. I hope that makes sense. I want to see how fast you go. Okay, we could do that. Pause game. This is about how fast I go. Although it seems weird if someone's watching you. <laughs> I feel like I'm messing up or something. But this is pretty much the speed I go. And this is working into spaces, so don't think it's the same as going into stitches. Stitches is like more, like slower and more tedious. This is pretty quick. Probably why they call it mile a minute because you just go along into the big spaces going boom, boom, boom. So that is how fast I crochet-ish, approximately. So Lewis Atkinson and Prophecy Fry both ask, how expensive is it to live there? So let me see, hard to say. Renting houses is expensive. Uh, fruit and veg, not expensive, that is cheap. I feed my family I have four kids and a husband and myself. It's probably about 50 or $60 a week for fruit and veg. And that is like a lot of fruit and veg, like a couple boxes, big boxes of fruit and veg. And what else? What else do I buy here? So I guess it's, I think it's pretty cheap to live here. Not compared to Amazon. If you're buying things like crochet stuff, gosh, or like, th like things in a store, like items that are imported, it's like probably about triple the price of Amazon. Not probably, it is triple the price of Amazon. So if you are buying anything in a store, yes, it's very expensive. Like crochet hooks, yarn. Their stationary supplies here are quite inexpensive. Anything we can kind of bring over cheaper from India. We're pretty close to India. So like lots of paper and stuff is from over there. So that is interesting. Housing more expensive, food cheaper. I would definitely say that. Going out for dinner, family of six, eating like a pig, having a couple beer or a glass of wine, depending on the temperature. 
uh, probably like 200 bucks and everybody is like really good food and really stuffed. And I think from what I remember in the States, 200 bucks would not feed a family of six a really good meal with, you know, all those things. But I guess it depends, right? So I think food here is cheaper. That was a long answer. I better speed it up. Sorry. Sand Pell asks, how close to the ocean are you? I am a 45 minute flight to the ocean or about a six hour drive if there was actually roads, but the roads are so horrible. It's like, I don't even, I've, I don't know, I've never driven there because you can literally just get stuck on the road for a really long time. Mombasa is also, like on the coast is also our importation port. So all the big semis or lorries coming from the coast with all of like everything on them, they're all brought by a lorry or a semi and they just block up the highway and it's just a hot mess, which also makes more potholes and it's like, it's crazy. So 45 minute flight is the answer. Giraffe trivia, humans have only seven vertebrae in their necks. How many do giraffe have? I have no idea, forgot to Google it. Who knows? Tell me in the comments below. Love to hear. Oh, that's from Gretchen. Thanks, Gretchen. <laughs> Joanne Wyman asks, how do you manage with the wildlife being larger? And you have, and you have a large animals in your home or near to you, love your channel. There are large animals in Africa, but, or in Kenya also, but they're not like in suburbs. We do have really cool cranes. They come in my back field. We have, the birds here are big. We, I had noticed birds, we have birds. The rest of the wildlife, no, I don't see. Lots of other neighborhoods in, that is my African gray pretending he's a cockatiel. Um, lots of other neighborhoods in my community my neighborhood or lots of other suburbs in my neighborhood spots in my neighborhood lots of other my, my lots of my friends <laughs> i could say that have monkeys around their house like they have to keep their windows shut or screens shut so the monkeys don't come in and like steal their sugar and stuff like that i do not have monkeys near my house i have really big birds and that's it jfs fmd asks do you knit your fur alone or held together with another strand of yarn? I crochet the lambkin all on its own. I did, I was expecting to have to buy Saver 100 to put it with, but it actually is on a really thick cord. So you can, it works out just fine with a six millimeter hook. You do not need to put another strand of yarn with it, which I found very surprising. M. Nito asks, I remember in a video you said your sister had moved to Kenya and you came to visit back in the day. Does she still live there or near you? Okay, excellent question. My sister lived here for 24 years and she just moved back to Canada, I want to say two years ago, but it's probably been three years because time really does fly. Is it more than three years? About three years ago. And she moved to Calgary. So holler to Calgary, hello. And yes, she lives in Calgary now. Beth Churchmack asks, how cold does it get there during your winters? Hmm, well, I'm almost getting into winter now and it's gonna sound super whippy, but it gets to be like, I think the coldest it can be is 18 degrees as a high temperature for the day. I don't think it's ever gotten to 17 as a high temperature. It gets lower but just like your average high temperature. It's, I, it's never frozen, there's never snow. I'd probably say like 10 degrees at night Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. The only way I can, I can say Fahrenheit, I have a thermometer like right there that has Fahrenheit on it. But other than that, I have no idea. But for me, it's cold because we don't have central heating and it's a stone house. So the, cold, the, the floor is cold, the walls are cold. It's kind of like living in a refrigerator, like your nose is cold. But is it actually cold? No. But for me, yes. If you were visiting, you'd be like, this is great. No, it's cold. Alison Garnier asks, is there a rainy season in Kenya or is it kind of hope and prayer, please let it rain situation? Was your visit to the draft center after the wee shower you showed us on the live feed? Because I thought the vegetation was looking more vibrantly green. Exactly, you caught me. I we. We went to Giraffe Center before it had rained. I just hadn't put it up on a podcast yet. 
So after, it's a lot greener already and I can't wait to go back to the national park to when it's like maybe after another month of the rainy season so that everything will be really nice and lush and green and we'll probably see a whole bunch of new animals. Oh my gosh, the sun is coming in. Ah, I need to wear a hat. I literally have a hat for this room. Because there's no, I can't put um, curtains up there. Well, I could, but it's really tall. Okay, hold on. the questions. Where was I? I got so distracted by the sun. Age Aruma also asks, have you ever made any amigurumi thing? Yes, I have. I have made Sadai, my lion. Let me show you my lion. That big guy up there. He's really big. That is at least like a seven foot bookshelf. He's about two feet wide. He's really big. So that was my dabbling in amigurumi. I don't do too much amigurumi. I'm not really one to do a bunch of counting. I find it like, it doesn't fit my lifestyle as much. I get interrupted a lot. I don't have the brain capacity. I have so many things going on. I don't really want to be like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just want to go until the end of the row and then turn and then go all the way back. You know what I mean? Just something more simple. So I do amigurumi maybe once a year. I did this last summer and I can't say I'm doing another yet. So maybe every two years. <laughs> Although that was big. That was a feat of strength. Prophecy Fry. Hey girl. She asked, cost of living in Kenya. Yes, we answered that. And are the homes expensive? Houses in Nairobi, generally about a million dollars, you can find something. And on the coast, for about three million dollars, you can literally have a slammin' resort. Did I say resort? Yes, you can. So fabulous, much cheaper over there. Less amenities, they do have good internet now, but less amenities, less grocery stores, less shopping, less of all that stuff. But so fabulous to live on the Indian Ocean. So comparing here to there, mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, I think houses are expensive here. Robin, Robin Garrard. I never realized you adopted. Did you adopt all your children? Also, many videos ago, you mentioned your sister was in Nairobi. Is she still in Africa? So answered that one. She's moved back to Calgary. And no, I didn't adopt all my children, just 75%. I adopted three and birthed one. Diane Sharp asks, you said you have four children, are they all adopted or, and do you have a biological ch uh, children? So yes, same answer, one biological and three adopted. Callie Crochet at All Crafts, hi. She asks, is there a place or activity that your family loves to do over and over and how many different languages can your family speak? Sadly, my children and myself, we speak English. My oldest son speaks he understands Swahili and a little bit of Gujarati and speaks a bit of Swahili. My, the rest of my kids do not. My husband speaks English, Gujarati, Swahili, and a bit, I don't say he speaks Hindi, he understands Hindi. So that, I'm, yeah, I'm the letdown of that language uh, task. Tammy Cook, she asks, do you, do you yourself have to drive with a driver or hire a driver every time you go somewhere? No, I don't. I drive myself everywhere as long as there is parking in a normal neighborhood. 
but so, like cavit, what do you call it, cavit, cavit, side note, where my, my fabric stores are, you cannot park there, you can't leave your car. So those places I do not drive myself because I can't park my car, but anywhere that I do go, because I don't really go to the, the fabric stores very often, maybe once or twice a year, not that much at all lately, um, then I would just, I just drive myself. So all of the places I go shopping, they're all like shopping centers, shopping complexes, they all have like uh, parking, like secure, safe parking. You've probably noticed, oh, it's another question. Let me, let me be quiet. Next question. Yolanda the hooker. Hey, Yolanda. She asks, how do you get rid of that horrible smell from lambkin yarn? I did, my gray lambkin did actually have a very bad chemical smell and I crocheted with it and I didn't really totally notice until I came back into the room and I was like, what's that smell? And it was from the lambkin yarn. That lasted for about two days. So that's what I did. I just left it alone. Now, some people are very like chemical allergic or, you know, those things really, really bother them. So what I've heard they do is they like unpack the yarn and, you know, like on a flat something in the garage or like a, you know, a room somewhere where they can just air out for like a week. After a week, they can get packed back up and put nicely and they won't smell anymore. So pretty much literally just air it out. Michelle Sanchez. She says, it looks like there's a great amount of security in public places. Example, I saw that you have to pass through security to park at the malls and they check your car to see what you may have. Also in your neighborhood, you mentioned that people rent security to dogs if they don't have any of their own. Is crime a big problem there? Tricky question. <laughs> Does it happen? Yes. I suppose it would be a problem. Uh, yes, but does it like it's it's just a numbers thing there is so many people in poverty 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 like starving like everything you'd think in your head there is millions of those people in my city so if you think about how many people there are who do have a house and do have shelter and do have a car and do have a computer and do have internet like just normal average life for us is like a jackpot gold mine heaven for the other millions of people who do not have so like nairobi has is the home of the largest slum in all of africa is kabira it's the largest slum in africa so you just have to be a bit sensitive to that and not just live life from your perspective of oh it's just you know it's an old phone like it's two years old or it's three years old or oh it's a beater car like it's still a car it's still a phone like it's everything you have is still good even if it's not good for you anymore so it's just kind of keeping that in perspective and living with it it's part of life so there so the security in the malls actually has nothing even to do with that, but that's the crime that would affect me. Like, you know, someone coming and like grabbing my handbag or, you know, so, but funny, okay, side note. <laughs> my sisters lived here. I had two younger sisters also living here. So there was four sisters living here. Nothing happens. They go clubbing all night long. They, you know, run it, they're like, you know, having a great time. Somebody tries to like grab their handbag, like in between bars, like they're running across a highway or something, middle of the night. Someone tries to grab their handbag, turns around and like beats him up, keeps her handbag and beats the guy, right? You're like, anyway, that's her here. She goes back to Vancouver, trying on shoes at, I forget the name of the mall, Metro Town, I think in Vancouver, trying on shoes, like, you know, you're trying on shoes, handbag sitting beside her, someone steals her handbag. In Vancouver, does she get robbed on a road in the middle of the night outside of a bar in Nairobi? No. Does it happen in Vancouver? Yes. So it's just that, you know, it's like it happens anywhere. You just have to be a bit prepared for it. But the security at shopping centers does not have to do with that. The security at shopping centers is just to make sure that you're not, um, like you're not a terrorist. You're not bringing in a bomb. You're not bringing in machine guns. You're not gonna go blow the place up or shoot the place up. So there is security like that at schools. So there's no school shootings. There's security like that at shopping malls. So there's no mall shootings. That is just a part of life here. It's also the head of UN for East Africa or Africa? 
not sure one of at least East Africa and all the main embassies for East Africa are also here so there's a lot of delegates there's a lot of international uh, diplomats and where they shop and eat and put their kids at school needs to be safe so that is why there's all that security let me see what other questions we have two Arctic wolves what's up she says does ice yarn have the red heart scrubby yarn please yes it does Look at that, I'm so prepared. This is scrubby, they call it a scrubber twist, I think. I'll put it up and I'll also put it in the, underneath the video. Yes, they have it, $1.75 a ball, four in a pack and tons of colors. And it is scrubby. I just worked up one ball, that's as far as I got with one ball which I think is pretty great. I have not, in my head I have a plan for how to do the scrubby. I have it all worked out, but I have not actually started doing it and it is something I wanna film. So until I have time to do it and film it, uh, it is just sitting there waiting for peace and quiet. <laughs> All right, those are the questions. Thank you. If you have a question that I haven't answered, leave it in the comments below and I'll answer it next podcast. We also have... Ba -ba -ba. So who won winner of the week last week? I did a random comment picker right before filming this podcast. And this is the thumbnail of the lady. Can you see her? Do you know who it is? Congratulations to Kareen Raymond. Thank you, Kareen. Yes. What a beautiful animal. I'm so in love. Thank you so much for sharing. So that was about feeding the giraffe at Giraffe Center. And I will be sending her out a sticker pack, which I didn't bring over here. I'll have to get that. So let me get it. So postcard, postcard and stickers and a tea and a coffee. I dropped the coffee, but I'll send a coffee also, and a pin. Pins are only gonna be for the next couple weeks because I'm almost out of pins, and I forgot to order more, literally, in my Amazon, so I'll have to order them next time, so. Pins are running out, but everyone will be getting this, and Kareen will be getting that. So how to enter? All you have to do is put a comment in the comments below this video and next week I will select a random comment who will win that same pack of postcard stickers, tea and coffee. And the question you need to answer is, what are your crochet goals for the summer? Hmm, crochet goals. I want to get some whips finished up. I think that's my goal. I want to do a foul, a finish along for the summer. Just get some things finished up. And I also want to put some borders on things. I have been saving blankets that need borders, so I also want to do a little crazy border time because that is so fun for me. I really enjoy it. But what are your border goals? <laughs> so what are your crochet summer goals? Love to hear it. Leave it in the comments below after this video. And I hope you win. So thank you so much for inviting me over. If you enjoyed this video, oops, I'm sitting on it. <laughs> and I dump my turtle. Hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell beside that if you haven't already. You can also find me on Instagram at Secret Yarnery and I'm also on the Facebook page, The Secret Yarnery. And you can also join the Facebook group, The Secret Yarnery Crochet Community. Great place to connect with the rest of the ladies, ask questions, answer questions, and post your pictures. Love to see what you're working on. So have a super great week. I'll see you tomorrow when we'll talk about what's happening for the Mile a Minute Cal. And stay hooked. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's so late. My kids are all finished school already. Like, what happened to that? My battery's gonna die on my camera. I hope I miss, I hope I got everything done. Do you think I did? Did I miss stuff? Oh my gosh, I hope not. Sandy, you're gonna have to be my neighbor just to keep me on track. I'm not joking. Okay, bye.